Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Out of the Park Baseball Tutorial Series. We are sort of wrapping things up here. There's maybe, you know, oh, if I had to guess, maybe three or four more topics I'd like to cover uh, besides this one, but uh, we've gone through the majority at this point in this tutorial series, and um, as a result, the channel has sort of uh, evolved to be more focused on the Let's Play, but the tutorials aren't over, and um, what I'm going to be going over today is uh, game strategy and player strategy. Uh, those two are essentially when you're simming through games and um, you know just trying to get through you know seasons. Uh, how your bench coach and as well as you know your minor league managers are uh, using your players personnel wise. How long are they letting starting pitchers pitch? Uh, how, you know how often are they stealing bases? How often are they employing the shift? Um, you know, all these decisions that a manager makes, when you yourself are not playing through the game, uh, this is going to determine uh, the decisions that your bench coach, uh, who becomes, you know, quasi your manager, uh, is going to be making. So I've booted up a new save here with the San Diego Padres, and we are just going to go ahead and click on the strategy tab. So let's go. We are here on the strategy tab now. We can see that Mark McGuire is the bench coach. That's pretty interesting. Um, so is he the manager of the Padres in real life? Is that true? Uh, I'm not sure if I knew that. Anyways, he is the bench coach now. And um, we can see that his manager style is conventional. And what this means is that um, if we were to ask Mark McGuire for his strategy, he would give you sort of the conventional approach. Now, the conventional approach is... You know, don't confuse that with old school or anything like that, because uh, how the you know teams are managed today, it's very different from how they were managed even 10, 20 years ago. So, you know, if we were to ask Mark McGuire for a strategy, he's going to give us what's conventional for today's MLB. If we come over here and we look at our strategy, we can see these are presets essentially up here that we can choose from. But what we have right now is what is uh, the default. And this is a default that runs for... Um, all sort of situations. So you can see that uh, everything is in the middle as far as stealing bases, using the shift, you know, working the lefty-righty matchups, hooking relievers, hooking starters. So, um, but that's not, um, these aren't along the normal lines for today's MLB. Think of them as normal along the lines of all of the MLB's history. So uh, when you put stealing bases at a rate that's that's average, you know, right smack in the middle between never and frequently, um, that's going to be normal for kind of an average of all the MLB history. So what's normal today would be, you know, stealing bases not nearly as often because we don't steal bases that often uh, in today's MLB, at least in comparison to years past. Uh, bunting, of course, uh, you know, if you're trying to manage, like teams manage... Uh, or tend to manage in 2018, that's of course going to come down. And, um, you know, if you're trying to, and something that we do more often is we use shifts. So, um, if, so don't look at these and see these buttons right in the middle and think, okay, that's right dab in the middle. That's sort of the, you know, the middleman approach to these situations because it's not. Uh, in today's MLB, things are very different. This is sort of the middleman approach for all of MLB history, uh, for better or worse. So um, it's important for you to be able to sort of, uh, you know, use these sliders to make sure the team is being run how you like it to be run. If you're a new school guy, you can run it like a new school guy. You can run it like a sabermetric guy, or you can, you know, play some small ball, focus a lot on stealing bases, bunting, things of that nature. Um, the game gives you a lot of freedom as far as setting the strategy goes, but it's important to understand exactly how to do that. So. Uh, if we were to ask Mark McGuire for the strategy, he's going to give you something that is conventional for today's MLB. So we're going to ask him, and you're going to see those sliders are going to shift a lot. So you can see that McGuire is in favor of using pinch runners pretty often. Uh, pinch hit for pitchers a lot. Lefty-righty matchup, you know, you got to work it. Um, he is hooking his starters uh, pretty quickly. That's true in today's MLB, but he's leaving his relievers. You know, relievers are pitching more innings these days. Um, so... And you're seeing a lot of sort of long relievers coming back, guys who throw two or three innings in appearance even. Uh, he's going to employ the shift. Um, not too much walking or pitching around people. Not going to use the hit and run. Not going to bunt all that much. Uh, stealing bases, he's going to do slightly above average, and he is going to be aggressive on the base running. 
um, you can see now we can actually ch change up the preset real quick and we are going to compare that to maybe a sabermetric uh, approach. And you're going to see a few things change. Uh, stealing basis has gone down quite a bit. You can see that the shifts have gone up, if anything. Um, we're not hooking our starting pitchers as much, um, but overall it's still pretty similar to what McGuire thinks. We're going to ask McGuire for the strategy again. It's not a massive difference in a lot of these cases, but I think McGuire is probably just a little less extreme on a lot of these uh, debates. You can see that these presets are applying for all times now, but and all scores. But you can actually change them as well to say, hey, you know, maybe you want the team to behave differently in close games or in late games. So, um, you know, what I might do right here is I might have the team behave differently for, you know, if you're in the ninth inning and it's a very close game, and what kind of things might you want to do? Well, I want to see, I might want to see more base stealing. And I might want to, you know, use the hit and run, or I might want to bunt a lot more and use squeeze plays uh, because you're essentially in a position there where you're trying to manufacture a run, you know, in these close games, as you know. So um, that's, that's super important. I'm going to go back to a uh, traditional preset now, and we're going to see how that looks. Uh, traditional preset, you're going to see we're not using the shift as often. We're not favoring the lefty-righty matchup as well as much anymore and we're walking intentionally walking players a bit more i'm gonna ask mcguire for the strategy one more time um so but one thing i will tell you you know when you look at mcguire is that it's not necessarily important that he has a manager style that fits yours although it, it you know it'll certainly help you implement uh nice and smoothly you can lock in this strategy right here so now mcguire can't really fiddle with it so if i wanted to say hey mcguire you're a conventional guy we're going to go a little bit more sabermetric uh, that can be done. So, and now that strategy is locked and that is up to us. You will also see here a starting pitcher's max pitch count. And this applies to all times and scores. Um, so no matter what happens, when if a starting pitcher reaches this pitch count, uh, they will be yanked. Um, it doesn't matter if they're throwing a perfect game or not. Um, so what I like would like to use in this situation is probably about 110. Uh, I don't, you know, there's not... There's not really any good reason why a pitcher should be throwing more than 110 pitches in appearance. You know, that happens in the big leagues sometimes. You'll see some guys push over 110, but uh, for most situations, particularly early in the season, you're not going to guys want throwing more than that, even if they're like 80 stamina guys. Um, the difference might be, the only exception might be if they're like a knuckleballer, because those guys, you know, if they're a knuckleballer with like 80 stamina, then maybe you can let them go, you know, 120, 130. Um, but everyone else... I would like to use 110, so uh, that's sort of your strategy tab right there. You can choose from the presets if you want, and then you can uh, kind of tinker from there. So you might say, hey, you know, philosophically, I would describe myself as a, you know, moderate sabermetric guy, okay, but then, oh, also maybe I don't like the shift as much. I don't think the shift is any good. Um, so what you can do right here, once I unlock the strategy, is, you know, I don't want to shift as much, but I still kind of agree with the sabermetric, you know, thinking. Uh, I just don't like that particular aspect of it. And so that kind of decision making uh, makes sense. So yeah, that's sort of your strategy screen right here. And this sort of determines how your team will function. Uh, and yeah, so let's get on to individual player strategy, which is different. Okay, I will meet you guys there. So now we are here on the Padres lineup screen. And uh, if you'll remember, we sort of, the way we left it, um, we were not stealing bases uh, very much because we had chosen sort of this moderate uh, sabermetric approach, with, uh, but just, you know, without utilizing the shift as much. And um, in that, under that sabermetric approach, we generally wouldn't be stealing that many bases, at least in comparison to teams, you know, in years past. And, um, but you might say to yourself, hey, even though um, I feel that way about stealing bases as a whole, if I have some good base stealers on my team, I still want to make sure they're going to get those opportunities. So the, um, the Padres' default uh, leadoff hitter right now is Manny Margot. If you come look at Margot, you can see, wow, this guy has 75 speed and 65 stealing. So he could be, you know, a very accomplished base stealer. And we don't want to kind of hold him back from doing that the way we would want to hold back, um, you know, sort of the average runners on this team. Let me look at Galvis. Yeah, Galvis is a 50-65 guy. He's not quite as quick. 
So, um, but when you look at Margot, it's different. He's 75, 65. Um, so we're gonna go, what you can do with Margot right now is you can actually uh, right click on him. And you can see that there will be an option for set game strategy. So this was just strategy that affects only Manny Margot. And once you come here, you can say, hey Manny, you know, if so we can override the team strategy settings that we just set and we can say hey we actually want you to steal bases you know very frequently and we want you to be aggressive on the base paths uh, and you know what maybe even if he's you know good at bunting or something like that you might want to say hey you know we want you to bunt a bit more if necessary or you know go for a bunt single um, more often I don't know what his bunting ratings are I didn't look at them but um, yeah you can also sort of this is also where you could set uh, using a player as a two-way player. Obviously, the only guy who's really doing that in today's major leagues is, is Otani. So if you're managing the Angels, definitely you can uh, use this to sort of determine uh, how Otani would be used as a two-way player, what positions he would play, uh, whether you'd want him in, as a DH or maybe in the outfield uh, on his hitting days. And then you can, uh, and then with Otani, in Otani's case, I would probably use like, uh, 10 day lineups or seven day lineups or something like that uh, just to kind of you know allow him to have those rest days too um, so we can uh, we set up uh, Margot's base uh, tactics and those have been sort of individualized um, but you can also use it to set a player's role on the team uh, so there's a lot of guys who can play you know multiple positions in this game but you might have you might want to have them only playing one position and uh, this particularly comes into play when you have a prospect so where we're going to come right here is we're going to go back to the main screen and you can see that Fernando Tatis Jr. is one of the top prospects in the organization for the Padres and if you look at Tatis Jr. he starts the season by default as a second baseman now, what we can do is we can just set him to shortstop, but that doesn't always guarantee that he'll be used as a shortstop at double A, because at double A, the manager is going to try to win games. So if, you know, if they have a really good shortstop in double A that they feel like can complement Tatis, they might move Tatis to second, keep that shortstop there, and let them play together, essentially. Um, but if your focus right now for Tatis Jr. is, hey, you know what, he's a long-term uh, shortstop for us. We want him to be playing shortstop in the minors. Uh, what you can do is you can actually set his game strategy as well. And what you can do is we can uh, force his use at shortstop so that won't happen anymore. So now Tatis Jr. is uh, will pretty much only be used as a shortstop at, at AA and uh, throughout the minors. This is also very important for uh, if you have starting pitching prospects a lot of times, you know, your minor league manager will determine that, hey, you know, maybe it's better for the team, you know, if you want to win games, uh, to use this player as a reliever. And you're like, no, he's a starting pitching prospect. He needs to be used as a starter throughout the minors. So uh, in the case of Mackenzie Gore right here, uh, we are going to force his role as a starting pitcher as well. Um, and we can also enter a pitch count here if we want. Uh, we can individualize those as well. Uh, yeah, so that's important. And when you go and you look at the pitching screen on the big league club, uh, you can see right here that there is uh, a pitch count uh, next to every spot in the rotation. Um, but this pitch count doesn't quite function like the hard pitch count does. Um, it's just more of a, a general estimate. So obviously if a guy's struggling, he's going to get yanked before he can reach his pitch limit. And... Um, you know, if, if so, if Brian Mitchell, let's say we set his uh, pitch count at, I don't know, 100. If Brian Mitchell was cruising along and he reached his 100th pitch, the game would at least probably let him finish whatever batter he's facing before yanking him. So that pitch count isn't quite as hard, you know, as, as much of a hard limit as, as the one for when you go on set game strategy here. Because then, you you know, this is the real hard limit and he'll be yanked no matter what. Um, so you can set these pitch counts here. I do. I really do. Um, so uh, obviously you have to base that on stamina as well as sort of how much you trust that player. So uh, my ace 
uh, which this team doesn't really have an ace. They don't have any good starting pitchers. My ace will generally get around 105, um, but guys who are maybe pitching lower in the rotation who might have, you know, their stamina might not be that high either. Uh, I might give, you know, more around 95 or 90 or something like that. So that's how I would uh, set up uh, my pitchers. You can use both the hard limits and the soft limits to dictate uh, just exactly how many pitches you want them to toss. Okay, I think that's it for today's uh, tutorial. I That was a, sort of a lot to cover, but uh, game strategy is very important for um, you know managing your prospects, particularly on an individual level, making sure they're playing the correct roles that you want them to play as they come up through the minor league system. I mean, as we discussed in the, um, in the uh, uh, defensive uh, ratings tutorial, which is the last one we did, um, position ratings are based on experience, and if you want them to gain experience at these positions in the minors, uh, the best way to do that might be by setting their individual game strategy. Uh, it's very, it's important, obviously, for managing your pitchers, as well as the general, you know, strategic approach of your ball club in various situations. So, uh, my voice is failing me for this tutorial, I'm a little under the weather. Uh, so I will bid you guys adieu, but thank you so much for your support of this series and this channel. It's been a, a great month or so, and uh, I'm looking forward to continue to pump out out-of-the-park baseball content for you all. Alright, see you later.